Over the weekend, news broke that Liverpool had agreed the transfer sale of Ben Davies to Rangers for £3 million, and Davies leaves Liverpool after not playing a single first-team match. After arriving during the 2020-2021 season, Davies was signed from Preston North End to basically be cover uh, for Liverpool during that time when Liverpool were struggling to have fit centre-backs. And fortunately, Rhys Williams and Nat Phillips stepped up to the plate and uh, you know they kept Ben Davis out of the team. And Davis never actually got a game with the Liverpool first team. Now, Davis's transfer to Rangers for £3 million got me thinking about the amount of money Liverpool have brought in this offseason in transfer sales. And it actually is quite a significant amount of money. Because Liverpool have spent some money this season on three transfers, Darwin Nunes, Calvin Ramsey, and Fabio Carvalho. Three of those three players, especially Nunes, has caught the eye or the attention of a lot of football fans around the world, especially a lot of anti-Liverpool fans. So I thought today, why not look at the amount of money Liverpool have brought in this offseason from their transfer sales? And, well, Davies is just one of the players Liverpool have been able to sell to fund these transfers. Now, I'm going to only talk about the initial transfer fees that Liverpool have received for these players that they've sold and for the players that they have bought this offseason because right now, well, it's anyone's guess if these players will achieve the add-ons, the performance incentives and add-ons that would cause Liverpool to pay more money to the teams that they've bought these players from or for Liverpool to collect further cash from the teams that have purchased ex-Liverpool players. Now, of course, Nunes arrived from Benfica with the initial fee being £65 million that Liverpool have received. That's going to rise or could arise to £86 million. Calvin Ramsey arrived from Aberdeen for £4 million, while Fabio Cavallo joined from Fulham for £5 million. And right now already, Cavallo looks like a fantastic purchase for such a small fee. Now, looking at those fees combined, Liverpool have shelled out £74 million in transfer fees this summer. Now, again, remember, that's just the initial fees. And of course, Liverpool also had to pay uh, agent fees as well as the salaries of these players. But looking at the players that Liverpool have sold, they have brought in £59.5 million in transfer fees, which, which is a fantastic figure. And if you look at teams such as Newcastle or West Ham or Leicester City, right now those teams have not brought any figures or any fees in, players that they've allowed to leave, anywhere near that, that figure. And if you look at Leicester City in particular, the own, they've done zero business in the transfer window, whether it be selling players or signing players. So Liverpool bring in £59.5 million in transfer fees for the players that they've sold. Now, the players that they've sold, well, a significant name, Sadio Mane, Takumi Minamino, Nico Williams, and the previously mentioned Ben Davies. Now, Sadio Mane brought in the most money for Liverpool this offseason, and the initial fee being £27.5 million as he went to Bayern Munich. And, of course, like we've said before, that fee could rise and that fee could end up being just over £35 million. But for the sake of argument right now, we're saying Liverpool have just brought in £27.5 million for Mane. Now, Minamino left for £13 million, while Nico Williams joined Nottingham Force for £16 million. Now, that figure is actually a quite a surprising figure. When you really think about Liverpool selling Nico Williams, a promising right back, right wing back to Nottingham Forest for £16 million, not even an established Premier League player, that is a brilliant bit of business Liverpool have done because, because they brought Williams through the Youth Academy. And considering that Takumi Minamino is an established Japanese international and the fact that he has also proven himself as a goal scorer in cup competitions and in the Premier League, it is a bit surprising that Nico Williams was able to go leave Liverpool for a slightly higher figure. But again, Liverpool doing some fantastic business selling Nico Williams for £16 million to Nottingham Forest and Ben Davies bringing in £3 million. So like I said before, that is a total of £59.5 million. Now, add in the fact that Liverpool also got those players' salaries off the books. Mane would have made a significant amount of money. Nico Williams, not quite so much. And Minamino, not quite so much. But again, all that money comes into Liverpool so they can put it elsewhere. And of course, we've seen Liverpool give a new contract to Mohamed Salah. So that money has been uh, pushed to that push towards Salah. Joe Gomez getting a new contract. Diego Jota in line for a new contract, which we've talked about here on the channel before. And Naby Keita also in line for a new contract, which again, you can check out the old videos to see the latest information on Naby Keita's contract situation. So Liverpool have brought in this money to make the club more sustainable. That is one of the things that Fenway Sports Group wants to do, is to make Liverpool sustainable, to be able to 
fund itself to be able to buy players with the money that they make and the money that they generate from selling players. So this is exactly what football clubs want to do, what they try to do, and what they fail to do so often. And Fenway Sports Group is getting Liverpool to do that. Yet, of course, we still have fans who complain that Liverpool, they don't they don't use the academy right, they don't do this, they don't do that. But in, if, in my opinion, but in my opinion, Fenway Sports Group has done very well at making Liverpool more sustainable, and their business in the transfer market this summer has really shown that. Now, along with the players that Liverpool have sold, the likes of Mane, Minamino, Nico Williams, and Ben Davies, Liverpool have allowed a few players to leave on free transfers. Loris Karius, who lives in infamy still at Anfield, left on a free transfer this summer, and I bet there's a lot of you out there that forgot Loris Karius was still at Liverpool. He was there last season, didn't didn't go out on loan, didn't uh, get any first team games, was basically, I guess, just around training and trying to get better, and Karius is now available on a free transfer, but I doubt there are very many teams that are going to be going in for Loris Karius this offseason after the issues he had at Liverpool and those high-profile issues in the Champions League final and also the issues he had later on at the Shiktas uh, in which he had some more uh, goalkeeper errors. Now, Liverpool, the highest-profile player that they allowed to leave on a free transfer was Divock Origi, who joined AC Milan this offseason on a free contract. But Liverpool also allowed youngsters Elijah Dixon Bonner, Luis Longstaff, and Shea Ojo and Ben Woodburn to all lead the club. Now, Woodburn was a bit of a surprise. He left on a free contract and joined Preston North End. And I say he was a bit of a surprise because at the beginning of last season, it was said that, that Woodburn had impressed coaches, including Pep Linders, and was in line, or, or at least in Liverpool's thoughts, of maybe being a first-team player in the future that they could bring through. And he went on loan at Hearts last season, playing 28 games, scoring three goals in the Premiership. And perhaps maybe those performances were not to what Liverpool were hoping for, and they decided to allow him to leave this season, or for this upcoming season. Now, Shea Ojo is a very interesting player because he has left Liverpool and joined Cardiff City on a free transfer. And Ojo was at Liverpool, well, he's been at Liverpool since 2011 when he joined as a youngster. This is the thing about young players and potential. Liverpool paid £2 million to acquire Shea Ojo back in 2011. Now, keep in mind, he's only 25 years old, but they signed him in 2011 for £2 million, paying MK Dons that fee uh, to join the academy and to basically play eight times for the senior team in the Premier League before going out on loan. And he spent loans after loan after loan with teams such as Wigan, Wolverhampton, Fulham, Ream, Rangers, Cardiff City, and Millwall before now finally being released by Liverpool with his contract expiring. And this is just another one of those players that Liverpool signed as a, as a young player and tried to bring through the academy or brought through the academy and hoped to sell on, but just couldn't do it. And to be honest, they've lost quite a bit of money in him, uh, whether it be that £2 million that they, they gave out to, that they paid MK Dons in the beginning, or also in salary that they paid for Shea Ojo, as well as consider the amount of money that has to be paid to the coaches who coach uh, the players in the academy. So a decent amount of money that was shelled out there for Shea Ojo. But in the end, he's now left Liverpool and joined Cardiff City after spending over a decade on the books at Liverpool. Now, as I said before, Liverpool have brought in a significant amount of money. Like I said, £59.5 million pounds on those players that they've sold. But considering those players that were allowed to leave on freeze, again, Liverpool free up cash that was paid in salaries. Uh, and again, like I said before, that money is now being pushed to other players to pay salaries and potentially, again, maybe in the future to sign further players. Again, I don't think there's going to be a significant name being brought in for the upcoming season. But Liverpool put themselves in position to use the transfer market in January or to prepare for the potential of signing Jude Billingham next season or next offseason when the transfer market opens and Borussia Dortmund are more in a position to sell the midfielder. All right, guys, let me know what you think about Liverpool's offseason and their work in the transfer market. I think that they've done a great job selling players, bringing in players, and again, like FSG have talked about, making the club more sustainable. So let me know what you think about the business Liverpool have done in the comments below. And of course, guys, you can find my social media handles in, in the video description. Join us on the Liverpool Reds FC blog Facebook page 
And also, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and give it a thumbs up. Also, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel over the last month. It is growing exponentially. I really appreciate it. You're helping me turn this channel into something even more, and I really appreciate it. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and staying up to date on everything we post here on Liverpool Reds FC blog. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time here on the channel. Bye -bye.